Rocket Gold Star in Taurine trim. This is a genuine Rocket Gold Star. Uh, it's dated 1963. We've got the logbook that shows the matching engine number with the frame number. <clears throat> so we know it left the factory as a, as a, uh, a Rocket Gold Star. It has been probably altered uh, in the fact that it's now in touring trim, possibly, because it has standard footrests on it, which makes it a nice bike. Um, the difference is basically, when it's in uh, touring trim like this, it will have the shrouds up here um, with the headlight. When it's in clubman trim, um, if you have a quick reference to, if you look at this one here, we see that the headlight is held on with a tubular structured frame here, which is like a horseshoe shape. And we've got two braces here. We mentioned also about the shrouds. Okay, they go on top of the forks. These are bolted to the forks. This has the shroud covers here, whereas the one that we're showing you, we're selling, has got gaiters. Coming so back. That's a, that's a Clubman. That's, that's in Clubman trim. This is in Touring trim. This has still got the 190 big brake, which would have been standard for this model. Um, it's quite nice. What the customer's got here is standard position footrests. Now, he's given me these. He was going to have these fitted, and they've never been fitted. They've been supplied by a, a Gold Star dealer. And they are the rear sets. Now, they will bolt up onto the frame up here to bring back footrest right back. So they go with the bike. They've never been fitted. It, in fact, it's quite nice to ride one of these with rear sets with standard bars because you sit back a little bit more. So we've got this side and got the other side. We're on the other side to show you. We've got the shorter brake lever because obviously with the rear sets, everything comes right back. So there's a new brake lever here. And uh, again, we've got the fold up um, uh, footrest with the rubbers. Um, the bike's in, in good order. Um, I'm just trying to pick anything out on here that you might be interested in. Carburetor, monoblock 389 with float bolt extension. In the day, all the cafe racer boys, they would have gone for a bit more fuel in that chamber because they would have rattled these bikes down the North Circular quite quickly. It, it gives you a bit more fuel capacity in the float bowl. Um, runs a, a bow mouth with a gauze on there. This is what tells you what it is. It's a DA-10R, which is correct. It would have been road rocket engine really originally. Um, and this is what you should have if you have an RGS. It should have this lettering here. What that have inside there will be a Spitfire camshaft, more um, peaky. Um, Siamese exhaust system, standard. Um, yeah, it still retains six volt electronics, um, electrics, so dynamo, magneto. We have, um, on the controls, we have manual advance and retard, as it should be. We've got the twin clocks, we've got the speedo up there and the rev counter. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice bike. I'll be honest with you, um, it's clean. The only things I can say to you, front mud guard, it just starting to show a little patina. There's a little bit of rust underneath the chrome, but it is original. And you know, if someone wanted, they can pick these up. They're not expensive, really, to be honest with you, or it could be cleaned up and re-chromed. That is the only, the frame is in good order. Um, you know, it's got all the right bits on it. And the wheels are pretty good. I mean, it's, it's a nice example. It was used, obviously. I don't think the last, the, the present owner has used it a great deal, but it's a bike. Let's say it's 1963, so it has been used. You read that, Dave? Yeah, I have, yeah. And it's, oh yeah, gearbox. Must mention the gearbox. It has got the correct gearbox. It has got the RR T2 gearbox. I know people say it's a stamping, but it is the right box. 
So it has the noodle roller bearings in there. It's got the higher ratios. It's a very tall first gear. In fact, it's easy to ride uh, a setup with this gearbox with this engine than it is with the 500 single. Because this engine is quite torquey, it would pull a lot of power. So if you've got an RRT2 gearbox, it works better with one of these engines in a way. It's just that little bit more grunt with it. Just going to summarise with you. At the moment, it's in standard trim. So we have first gear, which would be one up and three down. So that turns anti-clockwise, okay? When we put on the rear set, what works off of here, we have to turn the gear lever around the other way. So this would be coming out this way. So you can reach it. Yeah, so you can reach it. So when we want first gear, it's gonna come up that way. So it goes forward. So at the moment we're going that way. If we turn it around the other way, we can't go that way. And how we do it in here, we just switch the cam plate around the other way. We can turn it because it has a provision with the detent from top to bottom or from bottom to top, whichever way you want to set it up. It's quite straightforward. It sounds difficult. Sometimes people don't worry, but it just means the gears would be wrong. It just means their position. They'd be going one down for first and three up. But it's up to how people want to do it. You don't have to mess about with it. Okay, we're going to start up the RGS. Uh, so we'll just turn on one of these taps. Just tickle the carburetor. Just get the fuel of the flood out the top. We won't give it any choke. A little bit of retard. And one good kick. Very sweet engine this. We've just now advanced it up. Just let it run for a few seconds and it should then settle down to the kick over. So what we're looking at here first is making sure that we've got a good charge on the ammeter. As we can see here, we've got a good indication of a good charge. We had this um, regulator um, reserviced, um, overhaul rather. Lights, side light, main headlights, the dip, and hooter. Everything works nicely. Pilot lights from the two blocks. And now it's pretty down to a tick over. She's got a nice sound. This one actually does Twitter. But I think you agree, it's a, it's a nice, sweet bike. When that's warm, the tick over speeds up a little bit, mentioned before, just retard the lever back a little bit. We do walk around. What are you listening out for on these ones, Dave? What you're listening out for? Basically, we're li listening to hear any noises in the engine, any rumbles, which this hasn't got. Sometimes with engines, you can hear a bottom end rattle noise, top end, a tappity noise, tap it. All very nice and quiet. Picked up nicely. Engine's very sweet. We're looking to see if it's smoking, which it isn't. It's got a nice regular tick over. Let's just drag him round. This has got the Triumph clutch in it, four spring clutch. I say it runs on a, a six volt lighting system. It's all as it should be. It's just in, at the moment, we're in a, a touring trim, that's all. 